Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, we will try to create some data using the Trello API and then try to fetch that data. So this is going to be a fun one as we can actually see things changing on the Trello application as we make our API calls. All right, so let's get started. So I'm here in this Trello application. I'm already logged in and I'm on this Agile Sprint board that we created in one of our previous videos. So what I'm going to do is first try to add a new card. So this is what we're going to try out. So we're going to add a new card, add the title in there and then click on add card. So as I mentioned previously, when you're creating something, you're most likely using a post request. So this is what we're going to do. So I'm going to just here type it out test just for now and then click on add card. And if you notice, it added this new card for me and it just named it test. So this is pretty much what we can try to replicate with our APIs. So how can we actually do that? So I'm going to go to this Trello REST API documentation. So over here we have boards which we have been working with so far. And I'm going to click on cards because we're trying to create a new card here. And then in the card, if you notice, if I open this up, the very first one is create a new card. And that's exactly what we're trying to do. So for that, the request is post slash one slash cards. So this is what we actually going to try to do. This will create a new card for us. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind when you're making a post request, there are some certain things that you need to send in along with your request, which is your post body, right? So for that here, they have mentioned some things that are required. So here the key is required, which is a query parameter. You have your token that you need to send in as well as if you know, come down here, ID list that you also need to send out. So these three things are required. Everything else here is optional. So there's nothing else that's required. So when we are making this post request, we need to make sure that we are sending in this required fields and everything else that we want. It's optional for us. If we want, we can send that out. If you don't want, we can just totally ignore that. So let me just come back here. And then what I'm going to show you now is instead of just looking into this Trello REST API and figuring out what is we have to send, what we don't have to send. While this is a great way for you to figure out what you need to send along with your request, there's another way you can actually do that. So if I come in here and just do right click and do inspect. So basically open the dev tools. And if I go to network here, so make sure you select this XHR here so that you can see the all network request. Now here I'm going to do add another card. And I will do test one and then I will do add card. Now, if you notice, it made some calls here. So there's some batch call. So this is the batch call, which is trying to do, which is this post. And then it's also did this cards. So this is exactly the one that we were looking at over here, which is this post slash one cards. And that's what it's doing post slash one cards. Now, if I scroll down all the way, you can see in the request payload, it's sending the ID board. So it's basically saying, okay, this is this board that we are working with. It's sending the ID list. That's okay. This is the ID list that we are working with. And then the name, which is the test one, which is the actual name of our card and the token. So the token is obviously our API token, which we created before. Now we can actually use this and copy this whole thing here. And I can paste it in Postman and then put this request here slash one cards and do a post call what that will do or what it should do is actually create this new card for us. So what I'm going to do is we'll try this out. So instead of actually figuring this out through here, we will copy this whole thing and we will paste it in Postman and see if that will work for us. So let's try that out. So I'm going to head over to Postman again. First, let me make sure I'm copying this right click copy. And in Postman so far, we have created this board folder. Now I'm going to create another folder here. And I can name this one cards. And I can just say cards REST API. Okay, create. And here we will add in our new request. So I will do add request. And then I can do post slash one slash cards. So create a new card. So these are all optional. I'm just adding it in because we want to make sure what exactly we are doing. Okay, so that's good. So we have our post. Oops, I made a mistake here. I just did get post. Let me fix that. I'll change this to post and then save this. Okay, so this is good. So we have our post slash one cards. Okay, now what I will do is here add in my request. So this is pretty much this thing. I will copy paste here. Now I'm going to change this instead of working with boards. We are now working with slash one slash cards. So I will just change this to cards and then get rid of all of this because we don't need that. And then we need to pass in our key. We need to pass in our token to make sure this is basically my user that actually making that request. Now in my body, 
I will click on draw and then I would do JSON. So I will click on JSON here, then paste what we copied there. Well, not this one. Let me just come here and copy this. Go to Postman and paste this. I will click on Beautify to make sure that this looks clean. So this actually reformats the code. So let's take a look at what we want to do. So I have this name test one. So we definitely need that. So I'm going to change test one to let's say this time let's do test two. Closed equal false ID label ID members. I don't know what all of that is date last activity. So what I will do for now is actually get rid of all of this stuff. And we even check that this is not required field so I can actually remove this. I want to make sure that I'm passing in the right ID board. I also want to make sure I'm passing in the ID list. So just to let you know what that means. The board is this agile sprint board and the list is this backlog list. So I want to make sure that I'm creating in this agile sprint board and in this backlog list. So I will keep that information there. And then my token is what I'm sending. So now token I'm already actually sending along with my request. So what I'm going to do is try to get rid of this just to make sure if this works. Then remove this comma here and then I'm going to just hit send. All right, so that actually worked for us. We got a 200. Okay. So it actually did pick up the token that we were passing along with the request, which is good. And then we have our name, ID, board and list. So let's make sure if this is actually working. So I will go back to my application here and look at that. We have this test to create it. So we just created something through the postman and right here on the UI, we can actually see that's been generated. Now this is happening real time because it's a react application. So it's actually reloading it right away. So which is pretty cool. So if I actually come here and change this to, let's say test three, send, come back here. There you go. We have test three created now. So this is the power of actually doing things through API. It's extremely instant. You can put the data in there and right away you can see it in the uh, UI. Now, if you imagine if you were doing this through the UI, you would have to log in. You would have to uh, come to this agile spin board, add new card, add the details, click add card. That would have taken a lot more time. Instead through API, you're just passing in the right required keys, values, and there you go. Right away, you're actually getting data generated. So what I'm going to do is try to fetch this new data that we just created. So this test three so we just created this. What I'm going to do is try to fetch this and make sure that this actually exists. So how can we do that? Now, if I go back here, when we created this, it actually created a new ID for my card, which is this one. So I'm going to copy this. Now I'm going to try to make a get request on this card. So I'm assuming that's probably going to be card slash ID. We can actually verify that. We'll come to Trello REST API, do a get a card. Okay, so to get a card, it's slash one slash card slash ID. Perfect. This is what we can do to actually get a card. And in this one, you have to obviously ID is required, key and token is required, which makes sense. So I'm going to go back to Postman, add a new request here. This time it's going to be a get request. And I will do slash one slash cards and then ID. Okay, so that's good. This would get a card save to card I open this up it's going to copy this whole thing paste it here and then do card slash id now obviously i don't know the id so what i will do is copy this id here and paste it here okay now everything else is same. We need to pass in key token that we don't need to send in any body here because body, this is a post, uh, this is a get request. So no need to send the body. And if I hit send, I should be able to get the data for the test three card that we created. Okay. Awesome. So if I open this up and let me close this thing. This, okay. So here, if I notice we have our ID, which is the same as what we passed in here, which is good. And then I have my ID board and ID list. This should be the same matching as what we created in our post ID card. And if I scroll down, let's see where we can find that name there. Oh, uh, is it? Oh, there you go. So the name is test three, which is exactly what we wanted. So the one that we created here, I tried to fetch it using API and I was able to get all the details for that particular ID. Now, why does this matter? Why I'm actually fetching this data that I just created? Well, there's a couple of reasons. So let's say if you're doing API testing, you just created a date, new data. You want to make sure that your post request is successful while you can do that. Just making sure that you got this 200. Okay. You actually want to make sure that this is getting saved, let's say in the database, right? So this, the way you can verify is actually making a fetch call to that. So we get this 200 response back when we actually make a fetch call to this get API. 
And then we can see that, okay, the new data that I generated, which was with the name test three, I'm actually getting that response back along with the ID that I actually sent out to. So this is really a common uh, use case where basically you would create something, then you would try to fetch it to make sure it's successfully created. Now, let me go back to the network tools over here, just to show you guys how this would work. So a lot of times you can actually work with just this dev tools and you can figure out what's going on in your actual application. So here, like we just found out, okay, this was the request payload that we were sending. Certain items were actually optional and we can figure out what's optional, what's required by going to the documentation. And then here we can actually see what kind of headers it's sending. The request header, we can see it's sending these cookies. It's sending all this other information related to the Trello specific. And then we can also see what's the response header we are getting back. What's our request URL, the request method. And if I go to preview, so this is basically my response that I'm getting back, or I can actually go to response, but preview is basically a nice version of the response. So in my response, I have all of these things that you can see that we just did, but it's pretty much the same thing. So I have my name, which is test one for the fun of the card that we created. And then I have all this other information basically, which is related to my application. So not just with this request, I can actually keep taking a look at what's happening in this particular application when we, let's say, refresh a page. So I can see, okay, it's also trying to do a post call to feature flag values. It's also making a get call to announcements. It's making a lot of batch calls to probably get the data for all the pretty much application. And then they have some other stuff that they're kind of just doing over here. So this is Marcus viewed, which is another. Now, obviously I'm not too familiar with all of these endpoints. I'm only finding it out as I'm going through this documentation. So let's say if you're working for the Trello company, right? At that point, you would want to make sure if you're creating some API test or maybe adding some APIs to your collection, you would want to see which ones you have covered, which ones you haven't. And you can kind of come back here, take a look at which APIs they have. Also, you can come in here, basically do the same thing too. So, but I think understanding how the network calls are being made or how the dev tool works is going to be really helpful, specifically when you will get down to doing API testing. If you enjoyed this video, guys, please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.